Hey everyone, it's Chuck back again with another refrigerant checkup. I've gotten a couple questions on A2O refrigerants, so I decided to do a mini series, which I'm calling Anatomy of A2Ls. And I'll be covering topics like the flammability properties of refrigerants, how they're measured, how we actually define what's an A2L refrigerant versus a class three or a class one. There's also a lot of work going on with codes and standards. And then I'll get into some practical aspects of A2Ls around safety and handling, the applications, the systems we're going to see them in, or where they're already in use today. And finally, uh, some hands-on information on how we're going to service, charge, recover A2L refrigerants. So all that's going to be coming uh, down the line here. Today, I want to focus on flammability properties and really what defines an A2L. And if we remember back to the uh, chart I showed on the ASHRAE Standard 34 classification system, flammability really was in three categories. One, uh, which is typically non-flammable or no flame propagation. And then three was highly flammable or explosive. Those are typically hydrocarbon type uh, refrigerants. And then the middle was class two and a subdivision of that 2L. So really the determining measurement for what makes a 2L, if you really zero right in on the bullseye, is this thing known as burning velocity. So today I want to show you a little bit of really what burning velocity is, how we measure that, what the standard is, the testing apparatus, and just show you a little bit of behind the scenes uh, footage of what goes into measuring burning velocity. And again, once that's done, we'll be back uh, with future episodes talking a little bit more about some of the practical aspects of 2Ls. Before we get over to the lab, I just want to point out that we have an 8-2L newsletter that Camores uh, publishes on a periodic basis. It has a lot of information around A2L refrigerants. Uh, it's free of charge. You can just sign up and get it. I'll put a link down in the comments below uh, where you can get a, signed up for that newsletter to get all the information uh, as it is becoming um, available. So let's get over to the lab and take a look behind the curtain. So we're here with our special guest, Patrick Coughlin, and Pat runs our flammability testing lab here at uh, the Comores R&D Center and uh, does a lot of work for us in the refrigerants business. So I've asked uh, Patrick to kind of describe the test uh, methodology and then we'll go into the lab and, and see it firsthand. So Patrick, what can you tell us about burning velocity? At the end of the day, it's really meant to determine how fast a material burns and consumes itself. We use the vertical tube method here in Comores, which is consistent of we take a sample, we load from a liquid side, expand down into a mixing vessel. We then introduce dry air and allow it to mix for approximately five minutes before introducing it into the top of our burning velocity apparatus, which is consists of a 1.5 meter long tube. We open the top of the tube, we flush out the entire contents. We use our sample to flush that tube. It allows for approximately four times the volume to flush through the entire tube. Once we've done this, the, tu the tube and the test itself has come back to an atmospheric condition. We seal the test at both the top and base of the apparatus. We allow the mixture inside to come to a quiescent state so it is nice and no longer moving. We will then slowly open the bottom valve where we then exit the room. We have two electrodes down at the base that apply 15,000 volts of electricity for 0.4 seconds, which starts the flame down at the base. We have a kernel and it will slowly move up the tube, at which point we have our camera that acquires the image of the flame moving past our ruler, which will later allow us to go in with video software and actually analyze that flame's movement. There's only three requirements to determine the burning velocity, the propagation, point A to point B, the side to side of the diameter of the flame, and of course then the last parameter being the total flame front area. And once we have those three data points, we can then determine the maximum burning velocity of a fluid. This typically occurs a little bit over the stoichiometric concentration of the refrigerant being tested. Great. Um, so I have a quick question. I, I understand that this burning velocity vertical tube test is really designed for 2L type refrigerants. That's and if we put a, a class 1 in there, it would be very boring because nothing would happen. And a class 3 would probably be pretty exciting because it must, might be too much for this apparatus. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely. Um, so what you'll find, especially with the vertical tube method, 
Uh, class 1s, you simply won't see much. You might see a small flame kernel up here before it quickly dissipates out. Even some class 2s, up to about 3 to 4 centimeters a second, will quickly dissipate and fold in amongst themselves um, just from the exhaust gases coming out. A class 3, moving so much faster, the flame and all the other gases will expand at such a rate that it will most likely actually shatter our tube. Understood. So we won't be looking at any uh, class 3 flammability uh, experiments today. Unfortunately. But, well, thank you there. I think we should uh, go into the lab and, and take a look at the actual apparatus, and you can uh, point out these parts uh, when we get over there. Be my pleasure. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for following us over here to our, burn, our vertical tube burning velocity setup. What you've missed in between is I have a small apparatus where I've actually mixed up the fluid to be tested. What we're going to test and demonstrate today is pure R32. This is the reference gas used by both ISO and ASHRAE organizations. I already have my concentration mixed up in the back. I'm going to slowly begin to flood the front part of this tube that's already been completely evacuated. We'll then open up the base valve, flush the system, at which point I will then seal the top and base and we will have our 19% R32 mixture and air loaded inside this tube. We'll then actually ignite it down at the base where our electrodes will discharge 15,000 volts of electricity. You'll see a small flame kernel appear before slowly enlarging. There will be a moment or a period of unstable flame propagation until eventually we will form a beautiful crescent slowly move up the tube. By the time it makes it to our ruler, or our reference, you should see a perfectly stable flame before it eventually extinguishes at the top of the tube. The only thing I'll point out is under normal circumstances we have a mirror here so that we can see the flame to make sure it's not tipped in any way so that we can get an accurate uh, description of its total flame front area. It's been removed simply for our shooting uh, preferences. I'm going to begin by flooding the tube now. allowing the material to start to flood out and continuing to flow the material up until the point that we've reached atmospheric pressure. Now see on both the top and base of our apparatus. During this time in between we're allowing the gas to settle and become quiescent so that only the flame's propagation affects its total burning velocity. Now going to open the base as this is an atmospheric test. We will seal off the ventilated enclosure to ensure that no potential byproducts escape. You'll see a flame kernel appear at the base momentarily. For reference, that was approximately 6.7 centimeters a second. That's our test in a nutshell. Thank, Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate it. Very informative. Um, appreciate you showing us the uh, actual test and, and what's involved. Oh, anytime. Thanks. It's my pleasure. Thanks.